Hello class, this is section 8.2 and in this video we are going to discuss the reference temperature distribution. So we're going to handle another non-homogeneous partial differential equation problem. This is our PDE and you should, should notice that the Q term here, the non-homogeneous part, depends both on X and on T. So our one-dimensional rod is generating heat, but the amount of heat that every part of the rod generates changes with time. And we also impose a time dependence on the boundary conditions. So the boundary temperatures also change with time. And we have the initial condition as usual. This problem is a lot harder. And in fact, we're only going to be able to deal with a small part of it in today's video. We will make use of a tool known as the reference distribution. And here is how it goes. The first step is to find a function rxt that satisfies the boundary conditions, but it does not have to satisfy the partial differential equation itself, so it does not have to worry about the heat equation. This r is known as the reference temperature distribution. You have a lot of freedom in deciding how to find r, but there is a very straightforward way to figure it out. So we have um, indeed r0t equals a t and r l t is equal to b t. So you don't have to do it this way, but this I think is the simplest way to do it. You can define r x t as equal to a t plus b t minus a t over l times x. So geometrically what we're doing is that we are drawing a straight line between A and B. So this is AT and this is BT. And you can imagine this line changes with time, but it doesn't matter. And we're just drawing a straight line between A and B, and then we're calling that our RXT. So again, um, this line isn't important. You can make a parabola or whatever you want, but I don't really see any reason not to just use the simplest possible RXT that you can. The next step is to use a trick that we used in the case for time-independent, non-homogeneous parts. And we make the substitution, the change of variables, vxt equals uxt minus rxt. So we use rxt instead of the equilibrium solution that we did in the previous video. Uh, by the way, I should mention that the reason that we don't have an equilibrium solution for this problem is that everything's changing with time. So the heat source is changing with time, the boundaries are changing with time. So it makes sense that every solution of this equation is going to be ch changing with time, and there is no equilibrium solution. And that is why our RXT, our reference distribution, is a poor replacement for that equilibrium solution. And we can see how it affects the, affects the boundary values. So let's consider the boundary values of V. So V0T is going to be equal to U0T, minus r0t. We know that the boundary value of u0t is at, and we know that the boundary value of r0t is also at. So this gets us at minus at, and therefore v0t is equal to 0. And the same thing with the other boundary, vlt, is going to be equal to ult minus rlt, but this is just going to be bt based on our boundary conditions. And for r as well, we get bt. So bt minus bt is again 0. So we get these nice Dirichlet boundary conditions for v once more. And that is good. And that's exactly the reason why we needed these reference distributions to make the boundary conditions nice. The initial conditions also change in a nice way. So we have ux0 equals fx. So vx0 is equal to ux0 minus rx0. And this is going to be equal to fx minus rx0. So this is our new initial conditions. Call it ic. And it also seems not too different. 
However, the downside of using this technique of reference distributions is that it makes our PDE itself a lot worse. So let's see what happens when we substitute our PDE. We get partial partial T. So instead of U, oh, um, I guess we should mention this. Yeah, so U is going to be equal to V plus RXT, just by solving for U instead. So our equation becomes VXT plus RXT equals to k, second derivative with respect to x, of vxt plus rxt plus that qxt term. And when we distribute things out, we get partial partial vxt plus partial derivative of rxt. Unfortunately, since this isn't an equilibrium solution, the rxt doesn't go away. And we have this really monstrous equation right here. Partial squared, partial x squared, rxt plus qxt. Yes, and since r is not the equilibrium temperature, we cannot make the same easy cancellations we had for the time-independent problem. And this problem is actually not fundamentally the different, it's still a non-homogeneous problem, but this time we have multiple non-homogeneous parts, not just QXT, but this is also a non-homogeneous part, and this is also a non-homogeneous part. We will discuss how to solve this problem in a future video, but for now, what we have accomplished is that we have at least changed the boundary conditions to be nice. So they are just nice Dirichlet conditions when previously there were difficult non-homogeneous boundary conditions.